Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to part three of our series, Myths and Facts About Children and COVID-19. My name is Autumn Watson, and I'm a senior health manager here with our COVID-19 response unit with Mecklenburg County Health Department. And I have a few of our unit that are helping out in this presentation today. So we have Marsh Michelle Partridge Doer. She's our communication specialist running presentations today. Darian Woods, who is our COVID-19 epidemiologist for Mecklenburg County Public Health. Stephanie Siegelman, who is one of our health educators in the COVID-19 unit. And we have Gwendolyn Nevins, who's our health manager in the COVID-19 unit over our COVID response team. So I encourage you to use the question and answer section at the bottom of your Zoom um, while you are watching this presentation. If you come across any questions, we will be answering them throughout the presentation. And then at the end of this webinar, I will review some of the questions and answers that we have been able to answer throughout so that everyone will be able to hear the different questions and answers that have been asked. Um, this will also be recorded and will be available for viewing later, linked up to our website, and we will get that recording published out to you. Um, and you can also find it on our website at mecnc.gov backslash COVID-19. So we will get started. Again, welcome. Um, we are Mecklenburg County Public Health Department here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today we'll be, we will be talking about kids and the COVID-19 vaccination. At any time, um, if you have any questions outside of this presentation, you can always reach us through our COVID-19 hotline at 980-314-9400. And please select option three, option eight for Spanish. We're available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we do have individuals that are staffing this line at all times between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So um, you should be able to get to a live person. If for some reason we do have a high number of calls and you leave a voicemail, we will get to your call by the end of the day. Um, but again, feel free to call our hotline with any questions that you have that are COVID related, and we will be able to steer you in the right direction. If I get my children vaccinated, Will they be able to have children one day in the future? This is a question that was asked by a CMS, which is Charlotte Mecklenburg School's sixth grade teacher. She was also a parent to twin eight-year-olds. And this is a legitimate question that we get fairly regularly. Um, throughout history, there have been instances where experimental drugs have come onto the market and it has potential to have effects on not immediately, but fertility in the future. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like related to the COVID-19 vaccination today. What we will cover, we'll cover our up-to-date COVID-19 statistics for kids in Mecklenburg County. Um, these will be new statistics that are related to the last two weeks since we met last. We will cover COVID, the COVID-19 shot and fertility, which is the ability to have kids. So we'll go back and forth using either the language, um, the word fertility or the ability to have children. We will talk about the COVID-19 shot options, which will be a review for you and where parents and caregivers can find trusted information. We know that you have questions. All of us want the best for our children, and we want to be sure that you have the tools and resources to get your questions answered and get trusted, reliable information. So right now, I'm going to turn it over to Darian Woods, our COVID-19 epidemiologist, to review what COVID looks like for kids right now in Charlotte and surrounding communities. Darian? Thanks, Adam. So great news, in Mecklenburg County, we saw 442 cases in children during these past two weeks. Um, this is down substantially, um, around 73% from the previous two week period. In all, children under 18 accounted for 21% of the new cases. And to give perspective on this number, there are rough, the population of children are accounted for about 23% of our population. So we are seeing a slightly lower representation of children in our total cases. And then in comparison during the Delta peak, um, so back in August and September, children were representing about 30% of our total cases. 
And then the graph here in the bottom right shows that all these children cases from the start of the school year. And this really puts into perspective how substantial this past surge was compared to the start of the school year when we were experiencing Delta. We have made great reductions in the overall case counts for the population since the middle of January, where we were seeing our highest case counts among children. And then moving into the vaccinations for this age group, we have been, since the start of November, kids have been able to, um, five to 11 year olds have received their COVID-19 vaccination. And as of this week, 33% of our five to 11 year olds here in Mecklenburg County have received their first dose and 29% have received their second dose and are now completed with their primary vaccine series. On the other hand, children 12 to 15 have been able to be vaccinated since September and even earlier for 16 to 17 year olds. So among this population, we have about 60% of them who have received their first dose. Overall, we are estimated though that about 100,000 kids five to, 11, five to 17 years old have not started their vaccination series. This shows that we, that we have many opportunities to increase our efforts to get kids here in Mecklenburg County vaccinated. So I'll pass it back over to Autumn who will continue on with the presentation. Thanks so much, Darian. Those are some great strides that we've made in COVID-19 vaccination and wonderful news that our cases are going down in children. Now that we know what's going on right now in our area, let's talk about the COVID-19 shot and future fertility, also known as the ability to have kids. Will the COVID-19 shot cause issues for my kids when they get older and wanna have kids of their own? No, there is no evidence that any vaccines, including the COVID-19 shot, cause any issues with being able to have children in the future. But I heard it could. How do we really know? A couple of ways that we know are vaccines have been around and protecting us for a long time. There have been numerous studies on fertility throughout different vaccines over the years. Um, vaccines that you have probably ha heard of and or have gotten for yourselves and for your children. Vaccines like the chickenpox vaccine, it's also called varicella, the polio vaccination, the DTaP vaccine for children or Tdap for adults, and also many more. These are vaccinations. Um, some have been around for a decade. Some have been around for multiple decades. And we have been getting them ourselves and giving them to our children. And many studies on fertility have been conducted to see if any of these have ever affected fertility. The findings have been that no ingredients used in vaccinations authorized in the United States have ever shown any effect on fertility. So not only the ingredients that are used, so the individual ingredients that are used to make vaccinations in the United States, but additionally, the combination of those ingredients together into the shot have been studied. So why do some people say that the COVID-19 vaccine could affect a person's ability to have children in the future? We get this a lot. Um, we get this question multiple times a week in that I don't want to get my child vaccinated for COVID-19 because of fertility issues, or how do we really know that there's not going to be future fertility issues? So a little bit of how this came about and some mistruths mistruths that we need to dispel. Early on in the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, a false report circulated on social media. The false report said that the spike protein that caused COVID-19 illness was the same as another type of spike protein that prevents pregnancy in humans. The false report also said getting the COVID-19 vaccine would make the body react the same way and potentially prevent future pregnancies. The truth is there are different types of spike proteins throughout our bodies. The two spike proteins that were referred to in the false story, they are completely different and they're in no way the same. So they wouldn't function in the same capability and they don't even correlate to the same parts of the body. The spike protein found in the COVID-19 vaccine does not in any way affect fertility. 
Here's a piece of real world evidence. Um, before any COVID-19 vaccines were authorized for use in the US, all 23 Pfizer um, in the vaccine study who became pregnant after getting the COVID-19 vaccine delivered healthy babies. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about COVID-19 studies and how trials are conducted in individuals long before vaccinations are approved for use or authorized for use in the United States. We have some of the strictest safety measures in the world and definitely the strictest that we've ever had within the United States for approval of vaccinations. During the COVID trial, the vaccine trial for Pfizer, 23 of the volunteers who had previously gotten the vaccination subsequently got pregnant. Um, this wasn't on purpose. This was not a study to study pregnancies, but out of the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of volunteers for the Pfizer vaccine study, there were 23 women who did get pregnant during the study. They all delivered healthy babies. So not only were they able to get pregnant after receiving the vaccine, all of their babies were born healthy and are still healthy today. Currently, over 200,000 pregnant women in the United States right now have already been vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine prior to their pregnancy. And this is according to John Hopkins Medical School. There was a US and Canadian study of more than 2,000 women ages 21 to 45 and their partners between December 2020 and November 2021. So if you think back to December of 2020, COVID had been with us for almost a year at that point, and we had had many infections throughout the United States and throughout the world. So the United States and Canada got together to do a study specifically on fertility with regard to men and women and the COVID-19 vaccination. So getting the COVID-19 vaccine showed no effects on the ability to get pregnant or have a healthy infant. So they started studying these women and men in December of 2020 before we had vaccines authorized for use in the United States. They kept studying them for a full year after that and many of them who were trying to get pregnant, um, it, the study showed that there were no effects on their ability to get pregnant and their children were born healthy. There's also a reference here for NIH.gov. Um, that will actually take you back to the published study that was just published at the end of 2021 so that you can go take a look. On the other hand, the study showed that COVID-19 illness was linked to a decreased male fertility. Also, COVID-19 illness during pregnancy increases the risk of complications, including delivering a preterm infant, which would be earlier than 37 weeks, or stillborn infant. This isn't necessarily related to children, but it is related to parents. So we do want to make sure that you are aware that some studies that have shown no effect on fertility for COVID-19 vaccinations have actually shown adverse effects on pregnancy and pregnancy outcomes for individuals that do get COVID-19 illness. So now that I know what's going on with kids in my area and what COVID looks like in Charlotte right now, we know the COVID-19 vaccine does not affect the ability to have children in the future. What shot does my child get? So currently, um, the COVID-19 vaccination that is authorized for use in the United States is the Pfizer vaccine for children under the age of 17 years old. For children ages five to 11, the Pfizer vaccine is in two total doses. Those doses are smaller than the doses that we give teenagers and adults, and children with compromised immune systems may get a total of three shots. For children ages 12 to 17 years old, they would also receive the Pfizer vaccination. They get two doses to start, so that is their initial series, which is the same as adults, so they do get the same dosage as adults. And then children with compromised immune systems may get three shots for their first series. So those 12 to 17 year olds that have compromised immune systems, they would additionally have the potential to get three shots, just like their five to 11 year old counterparts. In addition, children who are age 12 to 17 years old are eligible and recommended to get a booster shot after five months. 
So they will receive their two, two doses to start, which is called their primary series, and then a booster shot after five months, which is the same as adults. Children with compromised immune systems may get a booster five months after their third shot, which would mean that they would end up getting an extra dose. So let's talk about the primary series versus a booster. The primary series is the initial round of shots given 21 days apart. So this would be two shots in a person with a normal immune system, or this would be three shots in a person age five, five years or older with a compromised immune system. A compromised immune system includes a variety of different complications or, dis or disorders that you may or may not deal with. Um, this would include chemotherapy treatment or organ transplant therapy for receiving an organ donation. Please be sure to consult with your child's primary care physician, um, or you can give us a call at the health department to see if your child is deemed immune compromised and what type of primary series they should receive. A booster shot is a shot that's given five months after the initial round of shots. Right now, booster shots are only authorized for children who are older than 12 years old. And a booster shot is given for different types of vaccinations to reprime your immune system to continue to make antibodies against that virus or that illness. We see booster shots in many other childhood vaccinations that children are given and in adult vaccinations such as a tetanus shot that you may get every 10 years. What about my child who's under five years old? So as of today, which is March 10th, 2022, children under five years old are not authorized to receive COVID-19 shots at this time. There are trials happening right now to study the safety for kids younger than five years old. And we do expect additional information coming out shortly for children who are under five years old to see whether or not there will be a recommendation for the COVID-19 vaccination. All right, so now that I know what's going on with kids in my area in COVID-19 in Charlotte right now, the COVID-19 vaccine does not affect the ability to have children in the future and what shots my child can get right now, where do I go for that information that I can trust? So great places to go for information that I can trust are your doctor or your child's doctor your local health department. And for those of you that are listening, most of you, that would be Mecklenburg County Public Health. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, or NCDHHS for short, the FDA or the Center for Disease Control or CDC. And FDA is the Federal Drug Administration. So what are those places that are not best for the trusted information? So some areas that are not good to go to get trusted medical information are social media. Remember that theory that we talked about a little bit earlier in the presentation about how this um, fertility information got out there to begin with, where the COVID shot might affect future fertility? That stemmed from posts on social media. Social media posts can get spread widely and quickly and don't always have solid basis behind them. So please do not go to social media to find trusted medical information. Also be leery of opinion-based websites. Um, if you're going to a website for trusted medical information, please be sure that you go somewhere like North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, Centers for Disease Control, or the FDA. Those websites all have a .gov back to them rather than a .com into their web address. There's some other areas that sometimes do have good trusted information, but you should always use caution and verify. One of those is TV news and media stations. Another is the local newspaper. One that we additionally talk about are friends and family. Word of mouth can travel differently. And if you've ever played the game of telephone as a child where you get in one large line and you start with a message at one end and everyone whispers that message to the next person in line, you'll see that by the time you get to the end of that message, the message may not be exactly how it started out. Um, that is how a lot of mistru mistruths and misinformation tend to circulate. A lot of times they're rooted in fact, but as they get translated, 
from person to person, they start to lose a lot of their factual content and pick up some things that maybe aren't factual. So always use caution and verify. Now we are to the point in our presentation where we will go back and check for questions. If any of you have questions, please link into the question and answer section of the website or of the Zoom webinar, and we will be glad to answer your questions. Um, we will keep the question and answer panel open while I go through the next couple of slides, which are upcoming vaccination clinics, but I want to do a quick check-in to see if we have any questions at this point. Hi, Autumn. Stephanie here. As of right now, no questions in the Q&A box, but we are watching. Thanks so much, Stephanie. All right, we will keep watch on the question and answer box. If you are interested in vaccination, we do have several vaccination clinics that are upcoming and look out, your school might be represented. Um, these vaccination clinics are open regardless of if you attend the school or not. They do not require a pre-registration and we will have individuals at these clinics that are used to providing pediatric vaccinations. Sometimes it's a little bit scary to take your kiddo into one of the local drug stores or in one of the big box retailers like a Walmart because they don't always do kids vaccinations. But at these locations, you can be assured that your child will be safe and well taken care of by a provider that is used to dealing with children. Um, and we will have education there available. So Friday, this coming Friday, which is tomorrow, March 11th, from, C to, from 3 to 6 p.m. at Star Mount Academy of Excellence on Brookdale Avenue, tomorrow from 3 to 7 p.m. at Devonshire Elementary School on Barrington Drive, Saturday, so the day after tomorrow, at Bain Elementary School from 10 to 1 on Bain School Road, Montclair Elementary School from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Farmbrook Drive, J.H. Gunn Elementary School on Harrisburg Road from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then next week, we have additional clinics. So on Tuesday, right after school, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Hawthorne Academy of Health Sciences on Hawthorne Lane, 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at University Park Creative School. So those are some opportunities next Tuesday. Next Saturday, we have from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Newell Elementary School on Rocky River Road, and from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Nations Ford Elementary School on Nations Ford Road. Please feel free to take your child um, for their initial shot, their second shot, or if they're eligible for a booster, we can additionally vaccinate adults at any of those clinics as well. So if you find yourself in need of a first dose, a second dose, or a booster shot, please come on down to one of the upcoming vaccination clinics that we have at some of our local schools. If you have additional questions or need additional information after this webinar, you can always visit our website at mecnc.gov backslash COVID-19. Again, you can always call us on our Mecklenburg County COVID-19 hotline. You can reach us Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 980 314-9400, select option three. You can also select option eight for Spanish, and we do have bilingual representatives on the line Monday through Friday from eight to five. Stephanie, I'm gonna check back in on those questions. Did we have any questions come through that need to be answered live today? Hi, Adam, not at this time. All right, fantastic. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, it is about 1225 and we will wrap up for today, but we encourage you to join us for our next session and our final session, which will be part four of our webinar series for parents, caregivers, and educators on Thursday, March 24th at 12 o'clock, and we will see you there.